Hello, I'm Josh High, broker here at Swift Home Mortgage and welcome to your weekly mortgage minutes. Today, I wanted to talk about a couple ways to save money on your mortgage payment. Realtors, if you're watching, this is something you can share with your clients and that's gonna be a big value add for them and a big reason that you should be reaching out and talking to people that have bought houses here in the last two or three years. So pay attention to that and make sure that you are educated on how to get them this information. So the first topic is gonna to be PMI or private mortgage insurance. The National Association of Realtors put out a study back in April of 2022 saying that nearly 46% of people put less than 20% down when they bought their house. What does this mean? So if they put less than 20% down, that means there's a very good chance that they have PMI attached to their payment if they're using a conventional loan. Now, what I'm talking about here does not include VA, FHA, USDA, other types of loans. We're just talking about Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, conventional conforming loans. Anytime you put less than 20% down, you are going to be required to either have upfront mortgage insurance or monthly mortgage insurance, which is really the most common. And that's just built in your payment and you pay it until you naturally reach typically 78% loan to value based on the purchase price and your current loan value. So when you look at your amortization schedule, once you hit 78% of that, then your PMI should go away on its own. Now, do we all wanna wait that long till we get to that natural 78% loan to value? Not me, I don't. So if I put 5% down on my house and I'm in an appreciating market like we've been in in the past three years plus, then I know that my property has gained more value from the day that I bought it one, two or three years ago to what it is today. So what that means is if you're able to go to your servicer, your mortgage servicer, the people who accept your payments or run your escrow account, the people that you mail your check to or you pay online, that's your mortgage servicer. If you're able to get in touch with them and tell them that you want to remove your PMI from your mortgage, then they'll tell you how to do it. Typically, a lot of people think that you have to refinance your mortgage in order to drop that PMI and get a new loan starting over at less than an 80% loan to value ratio, but that's totally unnecessary. You can get your mortgage company to drop your PMI off your account if you meet a few different criteria. First thing they wanna do is make sure that that value is as high as you think it is. So what they're gonna do is order an appraisal. They might get a full blown, regular appraisal like you did when you first bought the house. They might charge you just like $100 to go and send somebody to the house, make sure that it's still standing, it looks like it's in good shape, and they'll do some market research to put a value on that. We call those drive-by appraisals. Or they might even do just a simple AVM, which is an automated valuation model, where they just look at the data and say, okay, we think that this house is worth what you think it is, so we're gonna go ahead and make that your value. Now, if your loan is less than 80% of that new value, then they're required to drop your PMI and get rid of it so you don't have to pay it anymore. Now, this is something that you have to deal with the servicer directly. You can come to me and I can give you pointers on how to do it, but I can't call the servicer on your behalf and say, hey, Mr. Johnson wants this done to his loan because I'm not the borrower. They don't talk to me. You're the borrower, you're the client, you're the, the customer. You can call them, talk to their customer service and start the ball rolling like this, or you can go on their website and then you can look for a form asking how to get this done. What I would do is write a detailed short letter and then send it to them to their qualified rent response unit, which they are required by law to respond to you within a certain amount of time. Send it certified mail, priority mail, however, that way you can track it. You know that it's there and they have to get back to you within a certain amount of time. And this triggers the people that are in the back end that are off the phones, that are not answering those customer service calls. It gets them working on your case. And I find that things move a little faster when you do it like that. So absolutely use that to your benefit and try to do it. Now, the other way to get rid of PMI is if you do want a refi, you might want to look at a cash out refinance to see if you can get some more money out of your property to maybe pay off some debt, debt consolidation, do a house project, maybe you need some money for savings, whatever you want to do, buy, buy another investment property. Cash out loans are very popular. Uh, we're in an environment now where the rates are higher than where they were in about two, three, four years ago. So it really has to make sense for you to tap that equity and take a higher rate than what you have. But it is a way to get rid of that mortgage insurance if we can keep you under 80% based on your current value today. So that's a good tip, pro tip. Hope you can use it. Hey, if you think this information is helpful today, would you please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel? We put a lot of work into these videos. We hope they're helpful. We think it's really good information. We're getting good feedback from our clients and our agent partners. So if you find this information helpful, please go ahead and at least subscribe to our channel here. Those likes and subscribes really do a lot for us and helps us out with this whole YouTube thing. So I'd really appreciate it. It's, it's super, super helpful.
Thank you. Next thing I want to talk about is going to be escrow shortages. So last week in last week's video, I talked about the way that taxes can jump on you if you're not paying attention and you're buying a house that has a low tax bill. And then after it reassesses, then your payments go up because your tax bill went up. So we're starting to see customers this time of year is when it's very common for this to happen because a lot of these servicers, they do all their escrow analysis and everything at the same time of year. And then when it filters through the people's mortgage statements, they start seeing their mortgage payments going up. So they have questions now and they're asking, they're saying, why is my payment going up? What can I do to fix this? So a couple tips about escrow shortages and your payments going up due to reassessment. There's a couple things that you can do to lessen the impact of those higher mortgage payments immediately. One thing you can do is you can call your servicer. Again, the people I was just talking about with the PMI, you can call them and ask them to take that escrow shortage and spread it out over 36 months. Chances are, if you have an escrow shortage now, they've probably squeezed it into the next 12 payments in your mortgage payment to help make up that shortage on top of your normal escrow account. So you're paying over and above what you really need to be paying. So what you can do there is you can stretch that out and pay that money back over 36 months. So it lessens the burden on your monthly payments and it's, and it's a little bit harder to pay. That money's got to come from you one way or another because your bills, you know, it is what it is. Those amounts, they don't change. They're going to go up and you're going to stick there. You're responsible as the homeowner. Could be insurance doubling, could be tax bills going up, whatever the case is. If your escrow is short, see if you can stretch it out over 36 months to help lessen that impact. Now, the second way to handle that is you might be able to send them a check directly to cover the shortage on your escrow account. This might be an option for some people. If you have cash sitting around, you want to keep your payments relatively normal. Instead of them jumping up two, three, four hundred dollars a month, you might be able to just pay that off all at one time. You can send in a check directly to your escrow account where they don't apply it to your principal and interest payments as a normal payment. And you can go ahead and correct that escrow account and make sure that you're paying the 12 installments of your normal escrow account to cover your taxes and insurance for when they're due again next year. So that's a couple tips I have to help normalize your mortgage payments and keep you paying what you're used to. So if you have any questions about this, I'm here to help. You can give us a call, look us up, email me, Facebook me, whatever you'd like to do, and I'll be happy to help you. If you have clients that need this explained to them, feel free to shoot them this video. This is something that I think is really important that a lot of people don't talk about until they get in the process and they're trying to figure it out for themselves. So thanks again for tuning in. This is Josh High with Swift Home Mortgage, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.